This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. The purpose of this public meeting is to explain the project goals, present the recommendations, and hear your feedback on the recommendations. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. That's J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R dot S-M-I th the number two at dot dot s t a t e dot f l dot u s you may also contact jacqueline paramore state title six coordinator by mail at 605 sewanee street mail station 65 tallahassee florida 32399-0450 by phone at 850 414-4753 or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. That's J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E dot P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E at dot.state dot fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location on the project website and in the meeting notifications. In this meeting, we will present information on two projects located on Orange Avenue in the cities of Orlando and Winter Park in Orange County. These projects are the result of a department safety study which showed a significant crash history along this corridor. The purpose of both projects is to enhance vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle safety. The projects are being designed together, but will be constructed separately. We will begin with the first project, number 445691-1. This project begins at Clay Avenue and ends at Orlando Avenue slash Mills Avenue. This project is funded for construction in summer 2023. The existing conditions along the corridor include two 11-foot wide travel lanes in each direction. Approaching the intersections of Clay Avenue and Orlando Avenue slash Mills Avenue, the number of through lanes drops to accommodate left turn lanes. There are five foot wide sidewalks on both sides of Orange Avenue. There are also crosswalks at the signalized intersections. There are no bike lanes. This project proposes to restripe this section of Orange Avenue to provide one 11 foot wide travel lane in each direction, a five foot wide bicycle lane in each direction, and a center dual left turn lane. To help with traffic flow, the project also proposes widening Orange Avenue to add a second left turn lane in each direction for vehicles turning north onto Orlando Avenue and south onto Mills Avenue. Minimal tree removal is expected to accommodate the extra turn lanes. Signal adjustments are also proposed for this intersection. To increase pedestrian safety, the project plans to add a mid-block crossing between Westminster Street and Berkshire Avenue, which would include additional lighting and a flashing pedestrian activated signal known as a rectangular rapid flashing beacon or RRFB. Finally, minor drainage adjustments, bus stop modifications, and curb ramp reconstruction to meet current Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, standards are being proposed. 
The RRFBs are flashing lights that are pedestrian activated and give more visibility at marked crosswalks to alert drivers to pedestrians. The two rapid flashing yellow lights are mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. They remain dark until activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. When pedestrians come to the intersection, they push the button to activate the beacon. You can find the button on the pedestrian crossing sign under the look push button for warning lights sign. The lights located above will begin flashing to alert motorists of the pedestrian's intent to cross the street. After pressing the warning lights button, pedestrians should look both ways before crossing and make eye contact with drivers. Pedestrians may then enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop or there is no traffic closer than safe stopping distance. Pedestrians should continue to look in both directions while crossing the street. The RRFB is a tool to help drivers recognize a crosswalk and see that a pedestrian wants to cross. Under Florida law, drivers are required to stop at any pedestrian crossing when pedestrians are visible. Once the lights of the RRFB are activated, drivers must stop and wait to proceed until the pedestrian is no longer in the travel lane. For more information on Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons, or RRFBs, log on to www.alerttodayflorida.com. Design for this project is anticipated to be complete in early 2023 at a cost of $2.1 million. All work will be done within the existing right-of-way. Construction is anticipated to begin in fall 2023 at a cost of $1.8 million. This second project, 445-691-2, recommends safety and operational improvements at the Orange Avenue and Clay Avenue intersection. Currently, the intersection of Orange Avenue and Clay Avenue is controlled by a traffic signal. There is no connection to Groveland Street East from Wilkinson Street or Orange Avenue. There are pedestrian crosswalks at the intersection. The project recommends replacing the traffic signal with a single lane roundabout. The proposed roundabout would give drivers improved access to Wilkinson Street, Orange Avenue, Clay Avenue, and Groveland Street East. The roundabout will also have pedestrian crosswalks with raised islands at each street, giving pedestrians refuge as they cross the road. Other proposed improvements include installing lighting, landscaping in the center of the roundabout, and necessary drainage improvements. The historical monument signs will remain. The department evaluated different improvements for the intersection. The roundabout option was selected as the best option because they have been proven to reduce the most serious types of accidents at intersections as compared with a signalized intersection. According to a 2018 feasibility study, it is estimated that the chance of serious injury or fatal crashes is reduced by 70% with a roundabout as compared to the existing signal. Roundabouts reduce the number of conflict points or areas where vehicles can cross paths and potentially collide. At a traditional signalized intersection, there are 16 crossing conflict points, whereas there are no crossing conflicts in a roundabout. Roundabouts also have slower speeds between 15 and 25 miles per hour. The fewer conflict points and slower speeds reduce the potential for severe front end crashes. You can find more information online about roundabouts, including how to use them, the breakdown of how a roundabout works, the benefits of a roundabout, and much more by going to www.fdot.gov forward slash agency resources forward slash roundabouts, or by typing fdot.tips forward slash roundabout in your browser. Construction of the roundabout will require additional right of way. The amount of right-of-way to be purchased will be determined later in design. If you have questions about right-of-way, please contact Jeff Marlowe, FDOT Right-of-Way Manager, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5072, or by email at jeff.marlowe at dot.state.fl.us. That's J-E-F-F dot M-A-R-L 
O-W-E at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S. Once right-of-way begins, the department will contact affected property owners directly to start discussions. Design for this project is anticipated to be complete in early 2023. The costs are included under the 445-691-1 project. The department continues to seek funding for right-of-way acquisition and construction. Cost for construction is expected to be about $2.8 million. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 445-691-1 or 445-691-2 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. We encourage your input and feedback about this project and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by June 20th, 11 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. To submit comments in person, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. Written comments may also be submitted on the project websites at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-691-1 or www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-691-2. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at joseph.fontanelli at dot.state.fl.us. That's J-O-S-E-P-H dot F-O-N-T-A-N-E-L-L-I at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, Deland, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5234 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by June 20th. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project websites at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-691-1 or www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-691-2. Have a good evening.